Hey guys, my name is Ray Jelling. I'm a Twitch streamer that's been on the platform for four years. And since then, I've seen streaming grow from a small hobby to a mass career for thousands of people. To go live on Twitch, you need some sort of streaming software and there's plenty to choose from in the market. Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, OBS Live, and XSplit to name a few. They all range in difficulty, but up until recently, Streamlabs OBS was the easiest to use. Now Twitch has come out with their own version, specifically made for beginner streamers and those who have an interest in starting a stream. It's super simple to set up and go live, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. All you need is a computer that is able to run the game you wish to play, as well as stream. This is very easy to check by going to a website like PC Benchmarks. It'll ask you to enter your platform, your processor, your graphics card, and your memory, and from there, you can view all of the games you can stream, as well as search for a specific game. As long as your PC meets your requirements, in theory, you'll be good to go. To get started, first you need to navigate to www.twitch.tv forward slash broadcast forward slash studio and hit download now. If you want to change the installation path to your SSD, if you have one, then select advanced on the bottom right, otherwise just hit install. Hit get started to begin the setup. Now you'll see an audio setup page. Here you need to select your microphone. It will automatically choose what your system has selected as the microphone input, but if you want to select a different one, then click change mic and select a new one. You can also customize the sound of your microphone with the software to increase the gain, which makes the microphone pick up more audio and makes your voice louder, indicated by the bar below it. You can remove quiet noises by putting on a noise gate. This means that the microphone won't turn on unless a certain volume of audio is heard. It's great for removing the tapping sounds on your keyboard or background traffic. Another version of this is a noise suppressor. This one keeps your microphone open, unlike a noise gate, but it just suppresses the quieter noises. Loudness equalization is brilliant if you tend to scream and shout into the microphone like me. It makes sure that the overall sound of your microphone is equal and doesn't peak. If your microphone tends to peak very often, this is bad and can hurt the viewer's experience. If you're a loud person, please turn this on. Next is the video settings. It will automatically detect a video source that your PC is enabled, like an inbuilt webcam, an external webcam, or even a camera that's hooked up via an Elgato cam link. If you don't have a camera or don't wish to use one, you can simply skip this. You can select a filter from a bunch of pre-made ones if you want to get a different look and tailor this to what you want. Continue to layouts, and this is where you can customize your overlay. Your overlay is what your stream sees. You can leave this as it is, or you can adjust it slightly or completely by selecting Customize Layouts. The Twitch Studio Beta gives you three slides to play with initially. A main screen for yourself and your gameplay, a be right back screen for when you need to nip off screen, and a downtime screen which you can use in between games to talk to your audience. On the right hand side, you can see the different customization options. You can change the color, your asset image, which is your follower alert or sub alert icon, and your wallpaper. Hit done and continue to the settings. By now, your setup should have run an automatic stream quality test to determine what your internet can handle outputting to Twitch. If it hasn't, just click rerun test. If you're not happy with the settings, you can modify them by clicking tweak settings. You can select from a bunch of presets. The most popular one is usually 720p by 60 FPS, as the quality is average, but the frames it delivers to the audience provides a very smooth and pleasing viewing experience. Alternatively, you can turn it up to 1080p, but keep in mind, although you might have super awesome internet, your viewers might not. And as a streamer or an affiliate, your viewers don't have access to quality settings, so they'll be forced to try and watch your stream at a higher quality. That's a pain for those with slower internet speeds. If you want to fully customize your stream quality settings, you can. Make sure your encoder is always set to NVENC. This uses your GPU to encode rather than your CPU, and unless you have a really beefy CPU, you will always want to use your GPU. Hit done when you're finished. Now you can see your previously created layouts in all its overlay glory. You now have the option to go live straight away or tweak a few little things. If you want to hide or swap the layout of your software, you can move the stream info and the chat. You can tweak this to your personal preference. Selecting your game catcher will bring up a menu for you to select what you want to show. 
Your full screen application will capture the entirety of your screen. If you have two monitors, it will capture the main one, unless you select otherwise. To capture a game, select it under Windows. Make sure your game is running. If you have any issues capturing your gameplay, then select full screen capture. As this software is in beta, you may run into some issues. This is addressed on the Twitch Studio FAQ, so make sure to check that out and follow the instructions to fix your issues. Clicking next will lead you to your stream info menu. If you've used the Twitch dashboard and Streamlabs OBS before, this will look kind of familiar. Here you put your Twitch stream title. Try to make this enticing to attract viewers. Something about the game you're playing and a quirky sentence. Even a question can draw an audience in. Treat it like a YouTube video, except you're not able to control your thumbnails, so it's vital you get the title right. Next is your go live notification box. This is what the notification will say to your followers when you go live, so you should make this something welcoming. Next, select which category you're in, so which game you're playing, for example, followed by appropriate tags like beginner player or speedrun or whatever is relevant to your stream. Finally, select the language you'll primarily be speaking on your stream and clicking done will lead you back to the software. Now you're ready to go live. Do so by clicking go live at the bottom. If you want to customize your overlays even more to make it more personal, you can. You can add a start and soon screen, a full video screen, an ending screen, whatever you like. You can do that by clicking the plus button underneath your already made slides. With a blank screen, you can start to customize. You can add things on via layers and then layer one on top of another. If you're using Streamlabs Alert or any kind of browser, you can add this here by clicking the embed option and getting the URL from your alert and putting it in here. Click save once you're done. On the bottom right, there's a cog icon. This leads you to the advanced settings of your stream. If you're fairly familiar with streaming settings, then you'll recognize most of this, but you usually won't have to go in here if you've already run through the initial setup. Something that you want to look at if you are thinking of recording your footage is setting the video file type. By default, this is set as FLV. You can change this to what suits you along with your video recording path. The audio tab also gives you a bunch more advanced audio settings, including mono conversion and adjustable settings for the compressor and noise gate. You can also macro your hotkeys too, which means by clicking a combination of keys, it will automatically stop and start your stream, mute your mic and more things. If you have a Stream Deck though, I imagine support for this will roll out shortly, which will completely eliminate the need for hotkeys. I hope you enjoyed this Twitch Studio beta setup guide. If you did, make sure to give it a like and share it with other new streamers. And check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash ragedarling. I'm happy to answer any questions you have while I'm live. Good luck and have fun, and I hope you enjoy streaming.